coming in, you guys. It's day number 74 of my 365-day Jimmy Ice Bath Challenge. Getting into an ice bath every single day in the year 2022. Because, yeah, I'm all kind of badass like that, you know? That's how I roll. So here is the ice bath. As you can see, there is some ice at the bottom. Maybe you can see the ice developing on the Morosco Forge, those of you that are new. This is a tank. It makes its own ice. So down there at the bottom, you can see it. It's been a little bit warmer lately here in South Carolina, and so uh, the visible ice has been a little bit lacking as of late. So I promise you it is still very cold. Let's take a look at what the temperature is today. 33.4 degrees Fahrenheit, so plenty cold, I promise you. I wiggle my butt in there and it's gonna be <laughs> so cold. But today, you guys, I have one of my big fans and I see uh, he's on here now, Bulletproof Coconut, sent me a really fascinating new study, which once I go inside, I'm gonna read from the study when I go inside because it is so incredible. It's just a mouse study, so it's not like it applies directly to humans, but I think it's always good to look at mechanisms with mouse studies. And I'll tell you a little bit about what the mouse study showed when I'm into the ice bath, but it's time to hop in, get my butt cold real quick, let you guys see everything happening. Yeah, there's no visible ice in the uh, tank today, but I assure you that is some really, really cold water. All right, guys, let me pop into here on day 74. Thanks so much for being here. Five minutes on the clock, and here we go. All right, press start. Oh, there it goes. Sometimes I press start on that, and it just goes, I'm sorry, what? Oh, yeah, there's a big sheet of ice at the bottom. I just about slipped on it. Okay, you guys, uh, if you missed it today, I did a compilation of where I go woo at the very end. Uh, that was kind of funny. Um, if you missed the reel that I made about that, go check it out. But yes, when I woke up this morning, I had in my DMs, uh, Bulletproof Coconut sent me a link to a brand new study. It was actually an article about the study from Chinese researchers that used mice, and they were doing some calorie restriction uh, studies with the mice, and a lot of the longevity studies, they used mice to kind of see what calorie restriction would do, and they showed the calorie restriction leads to greater lifespan, blah, blah, blah. Well, one of the experiments that they did was, hey, let's expose some mice to uh, heat, and let's expose others to cold, and the way they did the cold, by the way, they blew fans on the mice to make them colder. And so the ones that got colder actually lived longer. And the old adage has always been, uh, the lower the body temperature, that means lower metabolism, and therefore they think, researchers, or at least they hypothesized, that lower metabolism from lower body temperature meant lower lifespan. But what they found was there's very distinctive differences between low metabolism and low body temperature 
and they said as an independent marker, low body temperature, i.e. making yourself cold, i.e. what Jimmy Moore is doing right now, actually, at least from a mouse study, can lead to a longer life. So you guys are always asking me, what are the benefits of doing this? I don't get it, Jimmy. Well, researchers are still vetting a lot of this stuff out. And this new study shows great promise. Now, I don't know how they would quantify it in humans other than someone like myself and lots and lots of others going into an ice bath every day and then getting someone with the same demographics, basically the same age, same height, same weight, same everything, and just seeing which of us lives longer. All I know is this is not gonna make me live shorter. And if it adds even a little bit of benefit in terms of life extension, it's worth it. I hypothesize the reason they see that is the inflammation lowering effects, because we all know that inflammation is at the heart of disease. And so if you don't have inflammation, you don't have disease happening. And if you don't have disease, guess what? You're gonna live longer. So that study makes total sense to me. I would like to see some human application before I really go rah, rah, you know, this is why you should do an ice bath. But it definitely makes the argument that making yourself cold is probably going to add benefit to your body and not detriment. How about that, guys? Pretty good little, and we'll read from the study once I go inside, or at least the article from the study. Time for me to go under the water. I love that Morasco Forge that it makes ice, but when there's a big sheet of ice on the bottom, it is slip and slide. So, <laughs> ah, isn't that interesting though? Thank you again, Bulletproof, for uh, sharing that study with me. As soon as I got that link, I'm like, ooh, I'm printing this out. I'm talking about this today. So, yes, yes, we will get into that as soon as I can feel my hands again. I will get to that here in a minute. Those of you that just came in, welcome to day number 74 of my Jimmy Ice Bath Challenge. I've been getting into a 32 or 33-ish degree water bath every single day, five minutes a day, five, I can't feel this hand, but five minutes a day for the whole year. Um, and the purpose is just, let's see what happens. And there's so many benefits to cold therapy that I've been talking a lot about. So here's the article. It was in neurosciencenews.com. And so it's a brand new study, literally just came out March the 14th. It was published in the journal Nature Metabolism. The title of this article, Live Fast, Die Young, or Live Cold, Die Old. So I don't want to get into the you know, nitty gritty of it all, but just the bits and pieces of it. They talk about body temperature exerting a greater effect over longevity and lifespan than even your metabolic rate. So how about that? A lot of people think metabolic rate and metabolism is everything about your health. And it's big, don't get me wrong. But they're saying body temperature has a much greater impact on your lifespan, which should make you pay attention to whatever direction the body temperature needs to go to be healthier. And I, I remember, I've been online long enough, I remember there was this guy, Matt Stone. He wrote a book called Eat for Heat. And he was talking about, he's kind of making fun of low carb people. Well, you, you can't eat low carb because you get too cold and you need to eat for heat and that includes carbs. And it was kind of an interesting thing. And so his idea was if you saw a low body temperature, that was a bad thing because he equated it, just like I was talking about earlier, to a low metabolism. We now know that's not true, at least not across the board true. Um, let's see, let's get to the actual, because I think they gave me the 
Yeah, I think they gave me the abstract. Yeah, here's the abstract. Body temperature is a more important modulator of lifespan than metabolic rate. Uh, the relationship between metabolic rate, body temperature, body composition, and aging are quite complex and not yet fully resolved. In particular, the body temperature and metabolic rate often will change in parallel. As the body temp goes down, typically metabolic rate goes down and vice versa which is why the Matt Stone wrote that book, Eat for Heat, because he said if you eat and make your body temperature higher, that means your metabolic rate is higher and therefore you're gonna burn more calories. That was his hypothesis. Um, so what they did was they showed uh, in both sexes of mice, so both male and female mice and hamsters, uh, they exposed them to temperatures of 32.5 degrees Fahrenheit or excuse me, 32.5 degrees Celsius, excuse me. So that's not super duper cold, but cold enough. And they found that it led to a reduced lifespan co uh, coinciding with lower metabolic rate and elevation in the body temperature. Because uh, you yeah, have 32.5 degrees, that is, Alexa, what is 32.5 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? So about 91 degrees. So they put them in pretty warm water. So they raised their body temperature and it lowered their metabolic rate. And there was no change in the body composition. So then they exploited this unique situation and they had the, them exposed to hot ambient temperatures and they found that their body temp went up, of course, if you expose them to warm temperatures. At the same time, their metabolic rate actually went down allowing them to experimentally separate the impact of the body temp and the metabolic rate on the lifespan so they could see what would happen. The impact of ambient temperature on lifespan can be reversed by simply exposing the animals to elevated heat loss by forced convection. That's where they put fans right on them. It reversed the effects of the body temperature, but it did not impact the metabolic rate. So the metabolic rate stayed the same but their body temp came down, but their lifespan was bigger. So the impact of manipulations that increase your lifespan may be mediated via body temperature and measuring body temperature may be a useful screening tool for therapeutics to help extend human life. Is that not interesting? So those of you that came in late, this is a brand new study. Thank you again, Bulletproof Coconut sent this to me on DM last night. If you ever come across research, by the way, or anything like this of interest, please DM me at Living Low Carb Man on Instagram, and I'm always happy to uh, to look at that stuff. But this is researchers out of the University of Aberdeen and Wenzhou University in China, uh, the Institute of Advanced Technology at the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Really, really fascinating that as the body temp goes down, that doesn't mean metabolic rate's gonna go down and it doesn't have any impact uh, in correlation with the metabolic rate to extension and longevity of life. This is big news, guys. Meaning what I do wiggling my body into that ice bath every day could, could, we don't know yet. This is just one mouse study. I wanna see a lot more research on this, but this this could set the foundation for, hey, we can, we can maybe extend life simply by making ourselves cold. Pretty neat, huh? All right, guys, let me pull down the comments, go back to the very top. I will tell you I tested my body temperature about four, just after four o'clock, and it was 99.4 degrees Fahrenheit. So everybody's been asking, are you still seeing that higher temperature before you get in the ice bath? And the answer is yes. Yes, I still am. Um, which is what makes it great. My hands are already back, my toes are back, and I've only been out just about nine or 10 minutes, so. Linda's here, Mudge is here, Sharon, Marcus, Frisk. Sharon says, woo, 74. Bulletproof's here, o Otav uh, Otavio is here, excuse me. Uh, Damix is here, Bulletproof says, go Jimmy. Uh, Mom, Ari Six is here, Classiquito here, Delan's here, Vicky, Yellow-Eyed One, Smilerista, uh, Jack Mick, Seagackert, 
Adelyad, Valley Views, a lot of you guys here. Thank you for being here today, by the way. Roy is here. JP Beignet is here. Mike S.G. Petty. G. Peduska Esquire. There's a lot of funky monkey usernames. I'm going to have to like <laughs> come up with shorthand. Matthew, uh, Mary's here. KGB's here. Adnan, Gabby, Karen, Jojo. Jojo says, um, I haven't been present for a week or so. I'm so glad to catch you today. Well, Jojo, welcome back. Good to have you. It's so funny. I kind of know my regulars who are always here. And then when one goes away, I'll sometimes send a DM. Hey, where you been? I missed you today. I did that with you the other day, Gabby, uh, when I noticed you, I hadn't seen you here in a, in a bit. And I was like, hey, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I've been busy. So I do miss you when you're not here, you guys. So <laughs> Vicky says, uh, Jimmy, do you have any family with the last name of Bad? Is that a joke or are you being serious? No, I not that I know of if you're being serious. Uh, if you're making a, a joke, yeah, my whole family is bad. Uh, unsweetened Geisha's here. I've been taking cold showers. I'm adjusting to it. I actually loved this morning shower. That's great, JoJo. And that's what it takes. It takes getting in, doing it, and doing it consistently. I think people try cold therapy once or a couple times, they're like, no, not doing it too much. It's like, okay, Nancy, let me go, you know, paddle you on the head. Because it's like, come on, once or twice? That's like saying, oh, I went keto for a couple days and it was horrible. Well, yeah, no kidding. It's always horrible when you go from a crappy diet over to keto. You got to have that adjustment period. And the same thing with ice baths, same thing with cold showers. Work your way up. I got featured on... Uh, this uh, page on Instagram today, pretty big cold therapy page. They they did a whole feature on me today. Uh, the name of the page, Ice Wim, uh, I-C-E-W-I-M. Go over there. They let me share it on my page as well, but they let me give a one-minute testimonial about why I do cold therapy. So how about that, right? That was pretty cool. And they've got, a like I said, a pretty sizable following and Got some good exposure. So hello and welcome if you're watching this today uh, because you found me because of that. Terrell is here. 2016 Hopes is here. Michelle, Lisa, Gigi, Kira, IKC. Michelle says, I, uh, my A-L-E-X-A -E heard you ask the conversion from Celsius to Fahrenheit and answered, yeah, whenever I do podcasts, I typically spell it out, uh, especially on the One Step Deeper podcast because you can hear our show on on there. Uh, we always go, yeah, you can listen on Apple, Stitcher, Spotify, or A-L-E-X-A. -E so as you spell it out, she won't answer. So AMC is here, Francis, Fedora. I had read that cold therapy helps boost immunity. It does, it does. And I think the way it does is when you're in there, it's just like exercise. When you're in there, you're tearing down your muscles at the gym when you're lifting weights. Well, when you're in an ice bath, you're actually creating a bit of a resistance within your body that your body then has to respond to. And it's that response that then becomes the muscle, just like you would in the gym, that can then take on any pathogens uh, that your immune system would need to fight. So it definitely boosts the immune system. Patrick is here. Grig is here. Heart and Soul. Leslie. Uh, Otavio is from Brazil. Hello, hello. Uh, Bulletproof uh, Coconut says, Jimmy is killing longevity. Hey, if it's legit, that study you sent, yes, I'm going to live longer than all you people. So. <laughs> hey, look, uh, I just want to be healthy. And if this is one of those modalities that I had to work my way to be able to get into an ice bath, but if... if those t that amount of time it took to get acclimated to be able to get to this point to now do this consistently every single day you bet i'm glad i'm doing it and even if it's not giving the full benefit of what is in that study if it's even doing a partial little bit if it adds two months to my life it's worth it if it adds you know two years, 15, 20 years to my life, it's super duper worth it. And so we have to keep all those things in mind. 
I was watching a friend of mine, you guys probably know her, Dr. Fit and Fabulous, Jamie Seaman, uh, and she posted a video today that I reposted on my stories of her getting into an ice bath. She had like a big like trough that she had put ice into. Uh, she lives somewhere where it's colder. And so she gets in and it's only to like about here on her chest, the water. She doesn't go all the way down. Um, and then I just saw like this look of consternation on her face and you could just see she was just in a lot of pain. And I was just like, wow, she's a badass. But even that was intimidating for her. And I was just like, all right, what I'm doing is pretty cool. As if I didn't know, but I, it, you know, seeing someone like her, it just really hammers home the, uh, I guess, the gravity, the heaviness, the the significance of what I'm I'm showing people. So yes, I'm proud. So Vicky says, uh, Bay D, uh, no Jimmy Bay D, their man and kids look somewhat like you. I don't know who Bay D is, but thank you. They must be handsome, with wet hair. And balding scalp. Uh, I tried it years ago and now I realize the water was too cold and for too long. Well, this is why you start where you can start. The, the rule of thumb, those of you that are new that haven't heard me say this before, when you get into cold, you're not trying to go the coldest possible. You're trying to get into the coldest that's uncomfortable but that you can tolerate being in for at least two minutes, okay? So that's your rule of thumb. It's uncomfortable, but you can tolerate it with, with breathing and, and just relaxing your body for two minutes. If you can do that, then that's the right temperature for you. You guys see me when I get in there, I have to like calm myself down for about a minute, minute and a half, and then I'm okay and I can talk to you. And so when you're in your shower, if you turn it down to a temperature and you're just like, ah, uh, uh, and it's just too much, it's going to be shocking. So let's just put let's just put that out there. It's always going to kind of be a shock. It's cold water. And so start higher in the temperature with like warmer water. Get your body under it. Get your head under it. Really do all the like bathe in it pretty good. And just slowly, ever so slowly move it downward. And you're going to get to a point where you're, where you're like, okay, this is uncomfortable, but I'm okay. If you go the full bore, you might not only just be uncomfortable, but you'll be like freaking out. Don't get to that level. Work your way down. Uh, Otavio says, I've been taking five to eight minute ice baths at least once a week since 2020. It feels great. That's great. And look, five to eight minutes with, I'm assuming you dump ice cubes into a, a bathtub. Um, that's probably going to be like in the 40s, maybe for the temperature, which is great. That's beautiful that you can get in the 40s uh, with ice in a bathtub, and that's great. Uh, and yeah, five to eight minutes in there. Yeah, when I used to do the ice in the bathtub, um, I would sometimes, oh, I'd, I'd easily be in there 20, 30 minutes. Um, and then sometimes I would just linger for like an hour. Well, I'm a big boy, so I would have to do my legs first, and I had to wiggle down and get kind of the, the stomach, and then wiggle down some more and get the shoulders and the chest, and and then dunk my head. Yeah, it was it was a process. It was a hilarious process. So now it's really fun to just get into the, to the Morozco Forge, get in there, get my five minutes, get it all covered, dip my head, and be out. So. Uh, Pete's here. Marcus said, I did a brief cool shower yesterday, only tolerated a few seconds of the cold. I'm going to try to progress daily. Marcus, that is how you do it, my man. That is awesome. Yes. Slow and steady. Nobody's trying to like hurry up and get you to get in an ice bath. Work your way down. And it sounds like you're doing it well. I mean, if you were able to get into a cool shower, that's great. When I started three years ago, I was in warm. Because I liked hot showers. I still like hot showers. I'll take a nice hot shower. Um, and then towards the end, I'll pull it down to the cold to just kind of get that that little boost of, of the cold therapy from the shower. Uh, and do it for like a minute or two. It's no big deal. But good for you. Cool is great. And then just slowly work your way down. Um, if it's too much, remember, breathe through it. You always have to...
Those deep methodical breaths are so important. Or if you want to do the Wim Hof, look up that. There's lots of instructors here on Instagram, but the whole It's a little more aggressive with the breathing, but it gives you that kind of warrior mentality that when you're in that cold, nothing's going to harm me. So do what works for you. Project 196 is here. Jojo says, I remember what you said about the shoulder area and the brown fat. I had no idea, so I make sure the water hits that area for a while. Yes. And the vagus nerve, Jojo. You want it to hit the back of your head, so you're already doing it with, with hitting the brown fat area, but you want to hit the vagus nerve. So if you feel on the back of your head, that little, that little knot right there, it's right around that area is where the vagus nerve is, and it controls everything about kind of your central nervous system, how you feel, how you think, how, you, how everything about who you are. And so that's what I love. So when I dunk my head under that 32, 33 degree temperature water out there, and I'm under there for about 12 to 15 seconds, that's what I'm doing. I'm letting that vagus nerve get a nice little dunking in nice cold water. Happy Couple Life is here. Mama's here. Crazy Cat Girl's here. AMC says, this is so inspiring. Thank you. I I try to live by example because it's easy for an influencer to just come on Instagram and say, yeah, do this. And then you never see them do whatever it is that they say to do. If I'm telling you to do something or if I think you should try something, you bet your bottom dollar, Jimmy Moore has tried it. Jimmy Moore is either currently doing it or has done it and seen results and is trying to encourage you to do it too. Uh, Coquelina's here. Jaylen for kids. Miss Chantal. Jaylen says, hi, Jimmy. Hello. Bulletproof says, will you ever use those cold beds for additional cooling? So yeah, there's there's chili pad. There's, there's all kinds of different technologies out there. And I went to two biohacking conferences last year and I saw all the major companies that make that kind of thing. I don't get hot at night. Um, I have, I sleep straight upstairs. I have an overhead fan. I've got a fan right there, which is right next to the uh, heating and air unit. So right now it's still pretty cool outside. So I don't really have to turn on any heat or cold. Um, and if it gets a little warm in here, I can turn on the fan. Once it starts getting warmer outside and it gets warm in here, then at night I turn down the air conditioner to 65 degrees right next to that fan. So that cold air goes right behind that fan and then it blasts me. And then I've got a secondary fan over on the side that I could blast from the other direction. So I never get, I never get um, hot at night. If anything, I get cold and I have to bundle up a little bit. Um, which is good. In fact, last night I was looking at the Aura Ring uh, data. I was down in temperature 1.8 degrees last night. So that's pretty significant drop in body temp. But I also had over three hours of deep sleep uh, as part of that. So it pays off, guys, doing all these things. Uh, Dr. Ross is here. Walnut is here. Otavio says, I've been doing it in a 500 liter bathtub and 200 kilograms of ice. Temperature is always 32. That's great. Um, unfortunately, I'm American and we don't know what liter and kilogram means. <laughs> I'm messing with you. Let's see. Uh, um, I can do a rough estimate, but that's, yeah, you're right. That's a lot of ice that you're putting in there. So that's good that you make it 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Jojo says, yes, the cold water on my head feels like heaven. It does. Like when you, there's nothing quite like that feeling of when you let cold water go over your head. Think about during the summertime. When you get hot, what's the first thing you do when you get a water hose and you're hot? What do you do? You wash it over the top of your head, right? Well, the reason is that's the quickest way to cool yourself down. Why do you cool yourself down? To calm your mind. And so I never stopped to think about it before, but that is what we did as kids. We take that hose and we would just spray all over the top of our head. And it was nice. And yeah, when I dunked my head under the water uh, at the end of my ice baths, it's always a glorious experience. In fact, I want to, one of these ice baths, I want to see 
an extended period below the water. I want to see, because I've told you guys some days when I've come up from being under the water for like 12 to 15 seconds. Some, day, some days I get that slurpy milkshake ice cream headache. And it it hurts. Oh my gosh, it hurts so bad. Like you remember, you used to suck the Slurpee or eat the ice cream too fast, and it's like Aah. I would get those uh, coming out. I've only had it happen maybe two or three times that I've gone under the water, and and it's a bitch, <laughs> but but you survive, right? Yes, 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 yes. I see Sarah just got here. Jojo says, in the summer, I dunk my hat in the pool and put it on. I also have a cold towel for my neck. Works great to cool you down. Yes, the reason the reason a hat and a cold towel around your neck feels good, that's where the brown fat is. That's where the vagus nerve is. And so it makes sense that if you're trying to calm yourself down, cool towel over that part of your body, right behind there is the vagus nerve. Makes sense, right? It's so funny, these things we've done forever and we just never knew why they made us feel good. Now you know. Uh, Miss Keto Sweeto is here. Jojo says brain freeze. Yes, the brain freeze. It really it really did hit me last week. I, I went under there and I came up and I was like, oh my gosh, whoa. Hang on a second. Because it was rough. It was really rough. But guys, day 74, hope you guys learned something a little bit today. If you came in late, I did read from uh, briefly the abstract of a new study, thanks to Bulletproof Coconut, all about how lowering your body temperature uh, and living cold can actually extend your life. Now, it's only a mouse study uh, for now, but uh, it could have human application down the road if they can uh, uh, find a way to test it in humans. Looking forward to learning to cool my water by myself so I don't have to be, uh, buy so much ice every time and then move on to do it daily. Yeah, o Otavio, that, that was my frustration with doing it in the bathtub. I literally was buying ice every three days. Big 20-pound bags of ice from Sam's Club. That got old very fast. And so, But I did it for about a year. I was not daily because it was just so frustrating because you had to fill the tub up and it took like 20 minutes to fill the tub and had to dump the ice in there and then you had to put your body in. Your whole body wouldn't fit. And you had to, eh. So it's just a hassle. Now I just pop in. I know it's 32, 33 degrees. I pop in, get my five minutes in, get out, done. It's so easy. It's so easy. Two True Believers is here. Cappuccino Kiss. Thank you for your interaction and congratulations on your discipline. Thank you. I feel like I've made this such a habit that I couldn't imagine not doing it now. Like think of the things that you just do automatically every single day. You don't even think about certain things, right? All those things that you've got in your, in your repertoire of what you do on a daily basis. Ice bath is no different, especially when it becomes convenient. So there's nothing more convenient for those of you doing nothing right now than in your shower. I assume you bathe Right, And so at the end of you bathing, whenever that is, at the end, just turn it down to as cold as you can tolerate. Uncomfortable, but still tolerate. And then do it daily. Watch how your life changes. It's pretty amazing. Thank you for doing these lives. I'm learning so much. You're an inspiration. Thank you, Jojo. I, uh, some people were challenging me. They're like, there's no way you're going to have 365 days worth of content about cold therapy. I'm like... Oh, you forget who you're talking to. I have made content for 18 years. <laughs> and so, If nothing else, I can just come on here and inspire you guys and, and do an inspirational talk. I don't have to necessarily always talk about cold, but that study, again, thank you, Bulletproof Coconut. Wonderful, wonderful. I will definitely put a link to it in the show notes so that you guys can click on that and read it for yourself. But I'm going to get off of here for now. Thank you so much for watching today, you guys. I'll be back again tomorrow for day number 75. And until then, we'll see you then.